and cut. All right. Whew. <laughs> All right. That was good. That was good. Nice work, James. Really, you 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 really took me places that not many people take me. Cool. Thanks. I think it it, it helps that um, it helps that I'm not needing you to lay all the foundational groundwork for me to even have a sense yeah. of what it is that you might be going through. Yeah. You know, because it seems like a lot of people who would interview you would probably be like, okay, I know almost nothing. Yeah. My questions are geared from trying to understand the absolute basics of, of what you went through. Um, yeah. And it's, it's really, there's some things that you said that, that it's like feels really great to hear. Um, it's like validation and clarification, like mm. the importance of talking to other people, which I think is one of the reasons why I realized I needed to write my book and start talking to other people. Mm. Although I, at you know, I was younger, I didn't have a professional career. You know, yeah. people would say to me, oh, you're so courageous. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I, I got nothing this to is, lose. This is, <laughs> this is necessary. <laughs> right. Right. You know, and, and, yeah. and also what you said there about, about, um, the osmosis thing is totally what was running through my mind when I wrote both my books, but especially yeah. the second one, which is like um, retelling the stories grounded inside of the larger philosophical model or psychological yeah. model that I had built in my first book. Um, are your books on Amazon, James? They are. Yes. Good. Yes. I'll track them down. Trust me. I'm a, I look forward to reading them. Oh, excellent. Well, I could, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to gift you, um, if you're, if you're interested, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll, Pleasure. Uh, I'll be seeing you at the spear plant medicine conference. So oh, I can, good. I can bring, uh, bring a copies for you there if you like. Wonderful. That'd be great. And, uh, tell you what, I'll bring a copy of dark naturally dawn, but I will wait until diamonds from heaven comes out and I'll be pleased to send it to you. Cool. Thanks. You know, I, I'm actually a little bit more interested in the one about classrooms. Actually, I can give you a copy of that because when you said so, I had written a book that I took off the market because it had some great ideas in it. But as a whole, I felt like too angsty and un, yeah. like un, undeveloped ideas. And yeah. one of them was talking about the energetic nature of reality as like frequency yeah. and tone. And yeah. what happens when you're in a group and one person at the front of the room puts out a strong emission and everyone else in the room is, is in a receptivity state. And then yeah. the energy of the room becomes greater than the sum of its parts and tra Absolutely. transmissions are being shared while simultaneously yeah. things start to come through the teacher, the presenter that they yeah. weren't even prepared for that. Right. They just start flowing through and it's an, it's an emergent right. spontaneity um, of, yeah. of knowledge and connection and, yeah. and communion that, that just, yeah. that needs that whole group involved. Absolutely. in order to happen and that's exactly what i'm talking about that's exactly what i'm writing about there's a chapter on the science of feels that but basically that's the phenomenon that kind of contagious quality and i've become convinced that not only do classes have fields of consciousness but that courses develop fields of consciousness i distinguish between the class mind and the course mind and and that I mean, there's just lots and lots of phenomena that took place over the years that began to began to make sense when I put it in the context of this. I began to, <laughs> I had the experience where I would just be looking for an example to make a particular point that I was lecturing on, and I would just kind of think of something and I'd throw out this example, and students started to come up to me after class and they say, you know, it's funny you use that example, because that's exactly what happened to me this week. Whoa, and this whoa. began to happen over and over again, and it began to touch deeper and deeper levels of their life. So I began to understand that there was some deeper subconscious kind of communication taking place. And then people started having all sorts of uh, spiritual experiences in my classroom that were related. They were being activated not by the ideas so much as they were being activated by somehow the way my energy had been changed in my sessions, even though they didn't know anything about those sessions. Mm -hmm. So I just had to sort it out. I had to figure it out. And the key insight, everything came into place actually in one session, literally in a matter of five minutes. I got the total download of the living classroom in five minutes in one session. Whoa. So, but in the book itself, I don't talk about psychedelics at all because this is just consciousness. This is the, the nature of consciousness. And if you use any technique that goes takes you deep, I think these phenomena will will occur. Mm, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, when I wrote 
decomposing the shadow, one of the things that I talked about for integration mm. um, is that, you know, I say, I say, you know, we need more people talking about this is 2013 when I release this. We need mm-hmm. more people who can, everyone who can needs to come out and start talking about it. And yeah. I, I'd hope that I'd written a book that gave a language um, yeah. that allowed it to be talked about in an intelligent like in, in a way that was intelligent and grounded inside of relatable experiences. So yeah. it doesn't, didn't sound too woo woo easy yeah. to connect with. Um, yeah. But that the people, <clears throat> the, the people who can't, they mm-hmm. could still share their psychedelic experiences by finding mm-hmm. ways of talking about what they had gone through, or mm-hmm. at least the implications of certain things, mm-hmm. or by living what it is that they learned without ever mentioning psychedelics whatsoever, because yeah. there's a risk of having uh, your experiences instead of like that really nourishing blossoming experience of being heard and validated um, it being invalidated and reacted against. And I think the quote is something like uh, careful not to throw, to cast your pearls onto swine, which is sort of like a shitty way of like judging people. But the idea that it's like, don't be careful with who you give these precious gifts to. Yeah. Both for yourself and for them, because if they push away from something, it can set them, on a course that will diminish, it'll hurt their long-term growth. With if it comes slowly and it's due time, then they then they might be able to re, you know open more positively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And go ahead. Is your address on your website? My uh, your mailing address. No, but I can I can send it to you. Yeah, send me your mailing address. I'll just drop this book in the mail. You can take a look at it even before the conference. Maybe it will lead to interesting conversation at the conference. Sure, I can, I can, I can, yeah. I can do a bit of a scan. I, I wouldn't be able to read the whole book before the conference because yeah, I, I, I have a reading list. But I definitely yeah. that'd be great. Um, sure. There was there was a couple of this is also being recorded. It's it's off record, but if you're down yeah. with this part of the conversation being released, I'd I'd let it yeah. out. Um, about you know this realization about like the the emergent um something that's yeah. there when you're in a group was yeah. one of the things that helped me understand how vitally important it is to go and see people speak live in a group mm. even if e- even if like uh i've heard mm. everything that they're going to say basically mm-hmm. on youtube videos or read their books that it's mm-hmm. like yeah I, it it is a valuable investment to yeah. go and sit in the presence of the living teacher and yeah. in the group and um yeah that's really something that i had to yeah it was kind of at odds with my sort of like post modern uh you know millennial yeah. vibes which is like you know yeah. smash hierarchy and and yeah. it's like whatever i want to learn i could just learn on youtube you know this yeah. kind of stuff and realizing yeah. that there's a deep value in this this ancient practice of sitting yeah. and listening to uh, we'll just say elder but that's a large complicated yeah. term yeah. but like the person who has the yeah. the greater wisdom or intelligence on the subject that you know you're listening to or yes. whatever it might be because yeah. it's not just several hundred people listening and having their individual experience because nature is porous all around the edges those several hundred people form a field And that person speaking is bringing their own field. And so there's a direct contagious quality and there's an amplification quality. So things happen as our experience rebounds among in the field of the room that's created when everybody comes together. I I absolutely agree with you. I think it's just it's just understanding the potentiating effect that groups have if these groups are focused and when they are listening to a speaker they are focused you know so there's a kind of a not separate intaking but a deeper kind of back and forth that says i feel it as a speaker i mean there's one of the things i i miss about teaching is i love being with the people i love because unpredictable things always happen i don't know what's going to happen when i'm with a room full of people now, if I'm at a conference and there's a, something I have to get through, I know I have to kind of keep it on key. <clears throat> but if I'm in a workshop afterwards and we have a little more flexibility, I love the creativity that emerges when I get can get that experience of contact with some larger fields. And things enter my mind that truly have not been there before. What, at the end of a day at the university, I would copy down my own blackboard. 
because things had happened. Right, right. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel that too. I mean, I, I give talks <clears throat> professionally as well, like uh, teach um, yeah. different different degrees of things. But yeah. um, one of the things that I had realized over time is, is even when I f- – even when I feel like I got nothing, I'm not ready. Um, yeah. If if the group is present and I yeah. can I can just put myself in the state where I'm like, okay, all I have to be ready to do is yeah. show up, yeah, as present to this group and yeah. get the ball rolling, get yeah. them interested. And if I can do that in the first ten minutes, something comes out. Yeah. And that if I think to myself, all right, I got this. Yeah. Then I'm going to miss something. It's like, no, yeah. I, I only have to have yeah. as much as I need to, to get up there and yeah. to, to make the connection. Then after that, something yeah. else takes over. Um, yeah. and that's, that's where the real magic happens. Yeah. Tell you what I'll do. <clears throat> I'll bring the living classroom to the conference, Sure. but I'll send you, uh, an essay, which basically gives you the thumbnail compression yeah. that came out and that'll give you the short version and you'll see it there. Great, as, as like a PDF or something. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, one last question. Field, sure. Fields of consciousness, okay, between humans. You didn't say morphogenetic fields, but I'm, I, you know, I can't help but make that connection a little bit. Absolutely. Um, and I wonder about this, I, this concept that new molecules, new psychoactive molecules, don't have fields of consciousness yet because they hadn't existed yet. Right. And that us exploring them deepens that. And, you know, specifically, yeah. I think, I mean, you could just say that, no, that's just us mapping what happens. Yeah. Or maybe it does deepen um, yeah. as more people go in and come out and share it amongst themselves. I'm thinking specifically awesome. the a huge range, okay, yep. of of uh, of potentials, um, potential tryptamines and phenethylamines that are present yep. in, in yeah. the modern world, but yeah. uh, also looking at things like say ketamine, uh, things yeah. like two CB, uh, yeah. things that are new to the to the human yeah. species. What are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> I agree with you completely. I don't know about a field around the molecule itself. I don't know, but definitely a field around our experience in using this particular molecule so that I think when we use salvia divinorum, we don't just have a physiological reaction to this molecule in our body, but there's a sense in which we are influenced by the cumulative effect of all the human beings who have ever used this substance through history. And when we are using a, a substance which doesn't have this history, we are literally seeding a new field as a way in which we're beginning a new set of experiences. And there is an energy, I think, that's associated with this emerging set of experiences. And I think that was partly my experience with, with LSD, even though it had some history on the scale of human, the story. It's a relatively short history. And I found it actually was a kind of a chaotic history. It took me a while to kind of move beyond that. But yeah, fields do exist uh, strongly. And uh, Rupert Sheldrake was a significant influence on me. Uh, I took in his book early on, his books early on. He's a friend now. Uh, it took me a while to understand that the, the dynamics that he was mapping for an entire species also applies to subgroups within the species. So when I was having these experiences in my classroom, I had his understanding of morphogenetic fields, but he was always talking about very, very large groups of people, whole species-wide groups. It took me a while to understand that the same dynamics unfold in a different play in smaller groups, so that they began to influence when I would have a course that met for 15 weeks, you know, that there was an energy that accumulated. And then if I taught the same course semester after semester after semester, there was a cumulative impact I started to have this experience where students would come in. I'm getting off of it. Students would come in. A whole group of students would suddenly let me know in the first week of class that they were already five weeks ahead in the syllabus. They, they didn't need me to take them from the beginning all the way through. They were somehow this, this field had fertilized and drawn to the classroom students 
who were impatient if I insisted on taking them the long way around. And I had to revise my entire syllabus to start where they were. And this happened periodically every several years in my teaching. So, hmm. yeah, I think mm -hmm. the way, yeah, the way that is described this, of uh, you know, uh, it's it's a field of conch. I feel like now I, f I feel a little woo woo just saying these words, you know, but like, you know, a field of consciousness that organizes not so much around the molecule. I mean, that might be very reductive thinking to say yeah. that, oh, you know, have to look and it's it's like the bacterial halo around the human being except an energetic yeah. field around a molecule but that the molecule increasingly um, the subject of human experiences um, you know accumulate inside of a domain of shared consciousness which yes. that molecule is the access point for or the or the gateway yes. to and that yeah. as that develops over time so does that sort of like field deepen in depth and breadth yes. And perhaps we could say intelligence, and at some point we start to feel like our subjective relationship to that energy and the information that's there, you know, we you know experience it maybe as the spirit yeah. of that plant, of that molecule. Yes, I think so. Well said, and I think so. And remembering that the in, the intelligence of the universe is vast, so. As we experience the intelligence, the impact that this molecule has on our individual consciousness, and as you put that's the threshold to the domain, as that domain deepens and becomes more powerful and increasing textures, even so, that domain is a mediating point between our point consciousness and the totality of existence beyond all dimensions of that we, we can imagine we, we t <laughs> I think of it sometimes imagine if we were really like uh, baboons just take us back a couple of million years and take us forward a couple of million years you know we're able to experience so much we think my god we must be able to experience the totality we must be able to take it all in but my sense is, no, nah, we're just getting started. We're just laying the foundation as a species. What the highest levels of spiritual actualization and psychedelic actualization that we may be able to actualize now, in another 100,000 years, people are going to be actualizing deeper dimensions because of the cumulative effect of these domains that you're referring to. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, whenever I get into these conversations, two voices start speaking up in my head one yeah. of those voices is james kent and the other of those voices is martin ball i don't know if you're familiar with those guys but they're, nah. they're pretty they're pretty critical of, of, of some of these ideas um yeah. and i so they're kind of there and i'm just calling it in where it's just like well mm -hmm. what a, here comes this you know um uh, you know, physicalist, uh, physicalist reductionism, skepticism yeah. wants to come in. Um, yeah. But I think there's something really, really incredible to consider there. And then there's also this block for me. And the block is, well, that's assuming we make it another couple million years. Absolutely. And something you said I thought was interesting, you know, is, you know, we're, we're not there yet, but we're getting into this deep purification process. And I couldn't help but think, well, I mean, World War One was a purification process. The second one was a purification process. I mean, we're not yeah. in a world war now, but it always it seems to feel like at any given moment, yeah. all our geopolitical systems are just going to absolutely yeah. collapse, and yeah. you know we're going to lose the internet. We're going to lose the this, the that shit. Yeah. I mean, we might lose fresh drinking water. We yeah. might lose the ability to grow plants at some point. We might end up in some yeah. like. Uh, um, what was that that movie interstellar style dust bowl you know so it's yeah. like all of these things um all of these things are possible and the idea that that would be part of the purification process is really like it feels a little bit idealistic compared to yeah. my um yeah. or optimistic compared to some of the the harsh yeah. um yeah. Not, i wouldn't say pessimism but maybe it's pessimism par parading as realism of yeah. like, well, I mean, actually, we're on the possibly the edge of full ecological collapse. So, w yeah. w I mean, I, yeah. if you want to speak to that, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, in Dark Night, Early Dawn, there is a, a chapter called The Great Awakening. 
and in Diamonds from Heaven, I renamed it The Birth of the Future Human, where I discuss exactly what you're talking about. You know, we're going into a planetary meltdown. We're going into a global systems crisis. I didn't understand any of this when I way back. I mean, I was totally naive back in the early 80s. I didn't understand what, but what happened was this, my sessions kept taking me into this over and over and over again. So I began to do my homework. I began to understand it. I don't know whether you might know the work of Dwayne Elgin, who's uh, the father of voluntary simplicity and, and a, a great futurist, and uh, uh, Peter Russell, his book, The Global Brain, The Global Brain Awakens. Uh, I think we are coming into an absolute crisis point in human history. I, I would anticipate just looking at the statistics of people who monitor the global trends that we're looking at a die off of more than half of the world's population. And that's why the, the book, my book, Dark Night Early Dawn, the dark night there is not the dark night of the individual soul, it's the dark night of our collective soul. And it's it's this dark night of, of absolute loss of all reference points loss of loss of control i think we're we're going into this major meltdown so much so that i understand people who really think we're extinct we just don't know it yet we've already used up our resources this you know we're just dead it's time for the planet to be given over to other species i i think statistically that's a legitimate argument uh my experiences in my sessions, however, are different. In my sessions, there was one particular session where I was catapulted into the death and rebirth of the species. And I experienced that as the species. I had merged with the collective psyche. And I experienced the complete implosion of our planet, not as an individual, but as the species. And we it just got worse and worse and worse. It was like a hurricane sweeping over uh, an island in the Pacific somewhere. And it looked like we were all going to die. But at the critical moment, the crisis passed and we began to pick ourselves up. We began to pick up the shattered elements of our culture. And when we did, we found that we had actually been profoundly changed by this crisis. I think we're looking at a crisis so deep, it's actually going to shift the foundation of the collective psyche. It's going to open us into a new level. Now, it's no certainty. I mean, it really could. It's a collective near-death experience, and it could just totally wipe us out, and nature goes on to the next planet and another solar system. But at least the sessions... My sessions have said it's going to be very, very bad, but we're going to get through it. And when we come out the other end, we're going to be not only living in a new culture, in a new technology, in a new economic reality, but we literally will be a different species. We will have broken through. And I, my way of understanding the internal dynamics of what's happening, I think um, the soul is incarnating in history. I mean, the way I understand it, we die, we get large, we incarnate, we get small. We die, we go back to a lar larger memory. So the consciousness we enter into when we die is not simply a discarnate personal consciousness, but we enter into our soul consciousness, which is the living accumulation of all of our experiences and all of our lifetimes. And this process of going back and forth between small and large the small changes, we evolve, we grow, we're developing, but this larger consciousness is always a, an integrative consciousness. I think if we just keep this up over and over for thousands and thousands of years, sooner or later, in one form or another, the soul consciousness wakes up inside physical incarnation. I think our entire culture, our planet was basically built by ego. And ego is a magnificent thing, I mean, but it's fundamentally cut off from the deeper fabric of, of textures of each other and the universe. I think when the soul wakes up in history, then we know we have lived on this planet many times. We know we have relationships with people that have been going on for thousands of years. We know we are in communion with a, a cosmic intelligence that we can draw upon continuously i think that's the internal dynamic of the pivot we're going through i don't think this species will survive on this planet if we continue to live in egoic consciousness 
mm. even enlightened egoic consciousness. I think I think we have to break into a completely new foundation, and I think that's what the process, what where we're going. At least that's what my my sessions have been teaching me. That's mm. where they took me. Yeah, Chris, I feel like I could talk to you for another two hours, man. Um, but let's well, let. Got- <laughs> let's 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 call it here we're, we're almost at right. noon i got another thing coming up thanks got again it. i really appreciate it this conversation great. me too i did too great. lots of love take care, take care.